All right, so continuing from um, sharing and race conditions. Remember, we said race conditions occur whenever due to um, scheduling or having concurrent uh, operations or tasks, the results aren't as they are expected to be. Right? Now, you've seen some of these. I'll just give you a common one you've seen um, or that you're likely to see. For example, suppose we have um, an office where we want to um, sell tickets to people, right? So, selling tickets to people. And each time we are selling tickets, we assign them a seat. And we had um, 10 seats to sell, right? And let's say, we, in addition to these 10 seats, we had about um, two secretaries who would take phone calls and when they get the phone call, they'll take your details and assign you a seat. Now, you can easily see a situation where, because there are two secretaries and, of course, 10 seats, it is possible to sell maybe 20 uh, tickets and have only 10 seats. And that's because as one secretary looks at the, the board and says, oh, yeah, I have a, a seat available for you, the other secretary at the same time could be looking at it and saying, yes, I have a ticket available for you. Right. And these types of problems are called race conditions. Race is like people who are in a race, who should go first, who sees it, who should um, take the lead, right? So to solve the race condition, um, in computer science, we have what we call critical sections, right? So a critical section is any part of code or process which has to be done in such a way that um, it prevents race conditions. So usually, if you're trying to avoid race conditions, you have to look at your code and ask yourself, which part of the code has to be done very carefully so that conflicts do not occur? So in the case of the two secretaries, they perform a few actions. One is they look at um, the seats. The second thing they'll do is um, pick an empty seat. And they will sell a ticket to match the seat. Right. Now, that means it doesn't matter how long, I mean, the amount of chit-chatting before. So, B, step B is um, order chit-chat. So, let's say before the secretary picks it up, you may say a few things. How are you? Hello. We'll call that other chit-chat. But there are a few steps that are critical. That is looking at the seat, picking an empty seat, and selling an empty seat, right? And that's because if two or more people look at the seats, so if we had two or three people looking at the seats, we could all say, oh, we have one seat available. So Secretary A says, I have one seat. Secretary B says, I have one seat, right? And she could go ahead to then pick a seat and sell the ticket. That will cause an issue. So we could come up and say, let's come up with a strategy that only one person can go and look at the seat pick an empty seat and sell a ticket, right? And for example, we could, well, this is real life. Well, if you want to do this in real life, say, let us um, share a notebook, right? A notebook. And if you have this notebook, the notebook will contain the seats that are available. You can check off the one that is available and then you can sell the ticket, right? And in real life, I'm sure a lot of you have come across cases where example, um, in a company, people are sharing files and one person gives one file to one person, another file to another person, and they could be selling things or even admissions. Maybe um, two or three different admissions officers are going around the country offering admissions to different people, right? So if the university has 10 slots available, Officer A goes off and admits 10 students. Officer B goes off and admits 10 students. If there's nothing to prevent all of them from selling the tickets at the same time or selling the admissions at the same time, you create a race condition. So we solve it by identifying the part of code, and I will call that part the critical section, which must not be shared, all right, or which must be treated very carefully so that we do not encounter issues. And that is a critical section. And the critical section has a few important characteristics, right? First one is mutual exclusion, right? In a critical section, we want only 
one person or one process or task to be active in that section. Right? We also want there to be progress. Progress means the critical section is not blocked off entirely from one process however. Right? So if there are two secretaries who are mutual exclusion, let's use the secretary example, that means that when one secretary is looking at a seat, picking a seat and selling a ticket, only one secretary can be doing that at any point in time. So uh, secretaries are not allowed to sell seats at the same time. They could be chit-chatting with you, taking your details, but once they are going to take a ticket, only one person can be doing, looking at a seat, pick a ticket, sell a ticket. Right? That is mutual exclusion. Progress, of course, means if one secretary is working and she finishes, the other one should be allowed to go in. So progress means that um, nobody stalls forever. we also have the last property which is bounded weighting which means nobody All right so progress and bounded weighting are things that tend to confuse people right because some people would say well um what's the real difference between progress and weighting so consider this let's say kofi and ama have come for an interview Right. If a manager is managing the interview process, you'd say, well, Kofi has come for an interview, Ama has come for an interview, right? And there is only one interviewer. Let's say um, Kwame is doing the interviews, right? And we have only one person, Kwame, doing the interview so that he's the only person offering admission once the interview completes. So at least we are having mutual exclusion. I mean, we are not offering admissions and causing confusion because we have many interviewers and maybe um, they are all offering ad admits at the same time. So let's say just one person. So that has mutual exclusion, right? So progress, as far as the manager is concerned, means other people are coming. So let's say Kofi came first and Ama was the second person, right? And somehow Ama is a little bit shy and timid, um, well, could be male or female, can uh, substitute a male name there, right? And so other people keep skipping. So um, Leroy comes and skips Ama. So there's still progress. So progress means that nobody is being, um, sorry, not nobody, let me put it this way. Critical section isn't. So it means people are getting to go into the critical section. So that's really the difference between progress and bounded weighting. Progress means, as far as the interviewer is concerned, Kwame is doing more interviews. So people are coming in. So Leroy comes in and has an interview. Um, Thompson comes in and has an interview. Um, George comes in, has an interview. Um, Amina comes in and has an interview. Um, Ahmed comes in and has an interview. Um, Kujo comes in and has an interview. Now, as far as progress goes, there is progress. The admissions officer is seeing there is progress. But what about bounded weighting? Bounded weighting means that one of the processes, in this case, Ama, can no more predict when she's going to go. Right? In other words, bounded weighting means there has to be some guarantee that somebody who is waiting to enter some critical section gets to go. Right? And you've seen this at least when you are maybe copying files, right? Maybe you are copying a file or downloading a file and it tells you um, six or five minutes to go. Right? So it, it gives you some bound and says, well, this is how much you have to wait for. It would be annoying if it kept saying for well, six minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 100 minutes, 1,000 minutes, 1 million minutes, meaning there's no bounded waiting. In most computer systems, you want to be able to guarantee people don't wait forever. Of course, progress means other files are being copied, other files are being downloaded. But as far as bounded waiting, that means for a specific process, he has to be able to be given some time and being told, well, after this number of times, you can get to go, right? So for any critical section, the things we would love, mutual exclusion, meaning only one person goes in, progress, 
meaning that people get to enter the critical section, right? So if it's files that are being downloaded, files are getting downloaded. But bounded waiting, so this is a tricky part, is for someone who has been told to wait, he doesn't get to wait forever. His time has to be bounded, right? So those are properties you would like to have for the critical section, right? In the next section, we'll talk about some of the strategies and algorithms that can guarantee uh, the critical section works, right? So quickly review. Race conditions mean there can be situations where, because things are competing, sharing resources, unexpected results happen, right? And the critical section is the part of code or part of a process that we define and say for this part, only one person can be in. And the properties of that are mutual exclusion, there has to be progress, and there has to be bounded waiting.